Hey guys, it's Dukes. Just a reminder, if you like the crease dive content, go subscribe below. You know, help us out. Press the subscribe button. It'll help us out a lot. Thanks. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, lax rats alike, welcome back to another episode of the Crease Dive. Today is Friday, April 29th. It is for the most part, the final weekend of the regular season of the 2022 college lacrosse season, the last weekend in April, before you get to wake up on Sunday, you get to head over to that calendar that's in your kitchen. You get to flip that page and it is May, the greatest month of the year. I'm Jordy from Barstool. And with me, as always, we've got Dukes on the mic. Dukes, huge, huge weekend coming up for us here all these teams make a one more push to boost that resume head into their conference tournaments. How are you feeling? I, I'm a big fan of the two episodes a week. I gotta say like almost makes it so you don't draw, draw out them episodes. Um, I feel energetic. I feel excited to talk about the games this weekend. We don't really have to recap last weekend's games. Um, really excited. A lot, a lot on the table, a lot of meat on the table this week for some teams, especially the Ivy league. So, yeah, I mean, the Ivy League. So you guys, uh, you, you guys are probably just as confused as we are on how uh, all, all the different possible scenarios on how the Ivy League tournament is going to shake out. Uh, so for this week's episode coming up in you know a few minutes, we've got Chris Yastrzemski. You probably know him best on Lax Twitter at at Chris Jast. Uh, he's here to break down all those possible scenarios on how everything can work out in the Ivy League tournament. Uh, but yeah, I mean, huge weekend for the Ivy coming up as they have five teams that are tied at the top of, of their conference standings all at, at three and two. Um, you know, a lot of conferences already have their, for the most part, the team's already locked in to, to that conference or to their tournaments. Um, you know, a few bubble teams here and there. So, you know, definitely a huge weekend coming up for everybody. Uh, but uh, real quick, be- before we even head into this weekend, Let's just talk about the hottest team in college across. We talked about them a ton on Tuesday after, uh, you know, after Brown was able to come out uh, with that big time win against, uh, against Cornell earlier in the week. Uh, but then Brown, they followed up. Listen, we, we talked about it, right? We said, listen, Brown, you guys are playing hotter than anybody who's not Maryland right now. You guys are doing the damn thing, putting these big time top 10 wins together Do not fall into the trap of playing Bryant on a Tuesday. Don't fall into that one. The last thing that they could possibly do is fall into that trap. Guess what happens, baby? You can't set a trap that's big enough for the people's goalie. Connor Thoreau with 19 saves on the night as Brown takes down Bryant 16-9 to to keep this hot streak that they're on going. Look, my my knees are a little scraped up from the last episode from uh, talking too much about Brown at the road. So, like, I'm going to keep this very short and simple. Yeah, Brown, it wasn't a trap game. It wasn't a letdown spot at all. It was an ass kicking. Um, it was the battle of the Ocean State. They they sent a message. I thought this was a good Bryant team coming into the year. Really like Marco Rourke's game. Brown held them to two goals on, like, 20% shooting. So, I think that was huge. But in itself, the most impressive part, I thought, with the Brown game was – Five different players had three points. Eight different players had multi-point games. So that just shows you the versatility that they had against Bryant, um, the depth that they have going into the Ivy League tournament, and the confidence that these guys, maybe these freshmen, sophomores that had the Ivy, the, the COVID year, they're getting more comfortable playing in this offense. And look, we said it last episode, I don't know if you guys missed it, but you don't want to play a hot goalie and throw it looks like he's a game changer and some someone that a shooter is going to be thinking twice about you might be thinking three times about him right like one yeah there i like not only are you not going to have a a, a ton of of spots to shoot from on him you know he's 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 a a large fella um but he's also i mean he's just quick he gets after it gets his body around and you know i've seen some clips that uh that our buddy larkin has tweeted out like you give this kid a chance to run the ball out of the cage. I think we could be seeing, I think if there's one goalie right now in college across who could give us, give us a nice little uh, blaze Yordan oh, at yeah. some point in the NCAA tournament, I've, I, I've seen the clip of Connor Thoreau playing ULAX ball. Um, he seems like a guy who can get after it on both ends of the field. So uh, yeah, I mean, huge win for Brown. And again, that, that just makes uh, you know, their life a whole lot easier as they head into 
you know, their final weekend of the regular season. They've got Dartmouth coming up, which, you know, again, Dartmouth hasn't been having uh, the, the greatest season, right? Like they had those that like two weeks where everybody in the Ivy was winning. Um, and then since then they haven't really done much since uh, Dartmouth, it's still going to be a tough game for them, but I, I feel like that's going to be a big time, big time Brown win. Uh, another Ivy league team who came away. This, this was a neat, this was a gutsy win, a big time gutsy win uh, for Penn, but that's, that's just the way that they like it. I feel like, I feel like it's not a Penn game unless it comes down to the final possession, especially against another Philly school. Uh, so Penn and St. Joe's, they go to overtime and it's James Shipley who gets it done for Penn, keeps them right there in the conversation. I mean, they were going to be in the conversation anyway for the Ivy League tournament since they're three and three. Um, there's still a chance that they can get themselves into that tournament. Uh, we talk about it with Chris later. So make sure that you listen to that interview. Uh, it's again, it's, it's it's a confusing one. We're all confused. We're not going to explain it. Yeah, we're not like, don't let us explain it because you'll leave even more confused than you came. Uh, but, you know, Penn right now, they're done their Ivy League play, but they got that last game in against St. Joe's and James Shipley. I mean, talk about a guy who's putting the whole program on his back right now, not just the laxing, but the program right between that tweet that he sent out to get that that tweet deleted. Right. He, he doesn't want to be rooting for anybody else. He's a guy who he wants to he wants to have everything in his control. He wants to be the um, the master of his own domain. And he says, listen, we're not rooting for shit. We're rooting for Penn. We're rooting for James Shipley. We're rooting for the boys. And he put the boys on his back in overtime, gets that game winner. Uh, so good for Penn there. He is the most clutch player in college across this year. I think this is probably because he, yeah, I, yeah, no, this is his. I, because it's the second OT game winner, he the, and it's all against in-state rivals. He had the OT game winner against Nova, the OT game winner against St. Joe's, and then he had a game winner or not game winner, a, tie, a game tire to send the game to OT against Penn State. Um, so you could make the arm. He's like Joe Robertson esque, is what I'm. I, at I right was, now. I was, I was, I was gonna say that yeah. those are those are Joe Robertson numbers, right? And there. Joe Robertson really hasn't had that clutch moment this year, so that's what I'm saying. Esque. Yeah, hey, we'll, we'll wait for the tournament. I mean, I know that Joe I, Robertson's gonna fucking shut me up in yeah. about two seconds, but I, I, I think that it, I think that I'm perfectly fine with saying that Joe Robertson or that James Shipley is the most clutch player in college across this year, but Joe Robertson gets a lifetime achievement award. Ready for some stats too? Oh, I um, totally agree. By the way, this is this is four. just. I just want to make sure I said th these points, and my ADD is so bad. Um, but this is this this shocked me, or not shocked me? It's just crazy when you talk about Penn's close games. This is the sixth game for Penn decided by one goal. They're four and two in those games. This is the eighth game decided by two goals or less, and they're four and four in those games. So they've had. So they're better in one goal games. So they they've only played a, a, so like. They've had eleven games, so eight divided eight out of their eleven games are decided by two goals or less. Mm, that's a it's an even and an odd number, so I'm not going to do that division right now. I don't have a calculator ready, but I, I, geez, you guys already know by now. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I also just like St. Joe's. I mean, that was a great comeback by Penn. St. Jo St. Joe's is legit. I mean, they they've had close games. They've won close games, but their three losses are all decided by one goal. So I think that that says a lot about Taylor Ray, his program. Um, it's a just gut wrencher. You know, you're going up against probably like the, the, the like the big boys, the, the team in Philly. Um, just, you know, you, you want to come on out on top of that, especially probably being like the little brother. So gut wrenching, but James Shipley's OT celebration. I, I fucking loved. He just took his helmet off, slammed to the ground, gloves off, just walked to the sideline. Like didn't like, wasn't like exuberant or wasn't uh, didn't show any jubilation. But it's, that it's, it's a it's a I just did my job. I'm clocking out, clocking out, home. clocking out, punching, Clock, punch clocking out. out. Um, I will say probably, you know, th th this is I mean, James, I, I don't even know how to say his, his say his name. This is uh, but we're not we're not name pronunciation, guys. Uh, Jamie Zussi of of Penn to be able to go 14 for 29 at the face-off X against Zach Cole, who has had games this year where he's gone 100%. Um, huge, 
right there for Penn. So, um, I mean, not often that going like 40% gets you a shout out or 48% gets you a shout out. Uh, but to make that a 50, 50 game at the faceoff X against Zach Cole, that that's, that's big. Cause, uh, I, I forget, I, I believe that inside the cross had him had Zach Cole as their first team, all American Fogo, mm-hmm. uh, at the very least it was going to be second team. I think at the end of the season, he'll be right there as a first or second team, all American faceoff specialist. Uh, so, so big time, big time win in that game within the game there for Penn. Yeah, that was uh, easily the deciding factor. I mean, also at, at the end of the regulation, um, I forget who on St. Joe's hit the pipe with like four seconds left. Like, that's both both of the games last night were rainy. Um, just gut wrenching for St. Joe's. I really, I was kind of hoping they got it done, to be honest. Yeah. Um, and then, I mean, Yale played Quinnipiac, but whatever. Yeah. Who uh, fucking cares? Yeah. So who fucking cares? And then also, you know, by the time we're recording this on Wednesday, by the time you're listening to this on Friday, uh, Virginia will have just played Lafayette on Thursday night. And they who cover the nine, cares? and they also cover the nine goal spread, but that's, yeah. Know, yeah. That's what's going to happen when you wake up this morning and be like, Oh, my Virginia ticket cash. Be like, Thanks to you. You're welcome. I'd imagine 24 and a half on the over under Virginia probably gets dangerously close to that one by themselves. By themselves. Uh, but yeah, so, I mean, listen, big, big weekend of games and it all gets going tonight, right? We, we've got a, we've got a big slate of games on Friday uh, before we get to all those games though. Let's uh, let, let's first, let's, let's do some segments, right? So we, uh, you know, we're, we're breaking up these set. We're two, two episodes a week. So we're going to, you know, do some segments on on Tuesdays, some segments on on Fridays. Right now, Dubes, I think that there are a lot of teams that are heading into their final game of the season. Right there, you know, they're clearing out the they're clearing out the lockers. They're doing all their exit interviews. Uh, you know, a lot of the boys just trying to figure out what they're going to be doing for the summer. I think a lot of guys might be a little down on themselves right now, so I think it's time to say something nice. All right. Uh, I'll say something nice to Hopkins. You know, this is a common, a team that I've shit on all year, a team that I've put in this segment, honestly, a lot. The two teams I put in my segment, say something nice tonight, put in a lot. But Hopkins, hey. Hey, Hopkins. um, That Bobby Benson, looks like you guys could have used him. Thank God you guys didn't force him out or get rid of him or anything. Um, Looks like his offense looks good. Maybe you guys can use him in a couple years and he can bring back your program. So... That's saying something nice. Yeah, that, I, I'll say something nice about Hopkins. I, I think that um, the band was still in key, uh, even when you guys were losing like 22 to six against Maryland. Like when they were when they were playing those because they didn't get to play for a while. Right. Like they, they did yeah. pro- it was probably like a good like 25 minutes between times that they got to play. Um, but there was you know, there was no rust between that like fourth and fifth goal that took like 20 minutes to get to. <laughs> Um, uh, here, here's something nice about, uh, I, I want to say something nice about Dartmouth. Um, listen, a lot of eyes are on the Ivy league this, this weekend, right? A lot of pressure on a lot of these teams. I feel like everybody right now who's a, who's a fan of lacrosse is watching the Ivy league to see what happens. A lot of pressure on a lot of these teams, Dartmouth, guess what guys, you're just playing with house money. You guys got nothing to lose here, right? Like you get, you get to play free, you get to play happy. You just get to do you. So, um, you know, you guys put yourselves in a really good position where you just get to go out there and have fun. So credit to Dartmouth for that one. Yeah. Also, I'm going to say something nice about Dartmouth. Just going off that. This is just a lesson in life. I might, I might've said it on this podcast before. You never want to fight somebody that has nothing to that. Somebody that has nothing to lose. That's just a street fight. Don't want to fight someone that has nothing to lose. They're always the craziest people. Um, this is Dartmouth this weekend. You know, Brown's the hot team. Dartmouth has shown fight against t- t- people in the top of the conference already. They lost a one-goal game to Cornell. So, yeah. I wouldn't be shocked if Dartmouth does give Brown a legitimate scare. And I wouldn't be shocked if Brown wins by eight. But <laughs> Well, that's not nice. That's not nice. No, but I'll say something Dude, nice. Dude, say something I'll, nicer. I'm going to say something nice. <laughs> hey, Dartmouth, remember when everyone was shitting on you last year when you guys lost to Dart- Tufts by like 15? You guys came a long way since then. We we appreciated your hard work all year long. I think you guys have a bright future. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you guys 
were in third place in the Ivy in 2025. And hey, Dartmouth, uh, lacrosse players, remember, you guys are all way smarter than me, and you guys are going to get great degrees. That was that was that was beautiful, Dukes. Thanks. You got anything? Anybody else you want to say something nice about? Uh, hey, hey, Michigan. <laughs> yeah, yeah oh. hey, 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 Michigan. It's your, it's your friend Dukes again. Uh, hey, Michigan. Remember when you started the year seven and zero? Well, you guys are seven and seven now, so you guys can either finish the year under five hundred, or you can finish it over five hundred. One game left. You guys decide your fate. Um. Dukes, I, I got to be honest with you, buddy. I, I don't think that they can. Why? Oh, wait, no. Okay, so they do get into the Big Ten tournament. They're definitely into the Big Ten tournament. So, so the, well, because the Big Ten, they're cowards, and they have everybody in the Ooh, tournament. So thought, they, okay. So they, so uh, I was, which, which is kind of fucking with my brain. I don't think yeah, that you should have. I don't think that you should have a tournament where where six teams get in. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so so I, I I thought that they were four two until we brought Chris on, uh, which again you guys are going to get to in in just a couple minutes here. Um, but yeah, so but but Michigan they don't have a game this weekend, but they will be playing again. So the top two teams in the Big Ten they get a bye. So then you have. Uh, I mean, with the way that it looks right now, I again. So would they this, play Ohio this, State if they if Ohio State wins this weekend? If if yeah, if if everything goes to what it is right now, I I believe that it would be Michigan, Ohio State for the third game. And, in a uh, row. Is really because they play Ohio State. I'm looking inside the cross. Lost last week to Ohio State. Then they got Ohio State 4:30, right, April 30th, and then they would play Ohio State again in the Big Ten tournament. Oh wait, hold up. Maybe maybe we're looking at different things. I didn't even realize that that Michigan had a game this weekend. It could also be. I'll I'll check the actual Michigan schedule just to double check. Bad, yeah, bad bad radio, bad radio, bad radio, no, bad fine. radio. But 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 we're I'm fine. I'm looking it up right now. Uh, Michigan lacrosse loading loading. Oh okay okay wow oh the Big Ten tournament starts okay. Oh, okay. Whoa. That, whoa. <laughs> That's so bad. But yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So Well, yeah. you know what? Like you you guys can't even blame us though for not giving a shit about the Big Ten tournament because there's literally only one good team in the Big Ten and it's Maryland. This also the isn't Ver- fair. It's the big the so the first round of the Big Ten tournament is Saturday, and then the Big Ten semifinals is next Thursday, and then the Big Ten final is next Saturday. Like okay. mentally I I mentally next week is just the, the conference tournament to me. Yeah. All right. That's pretty fucked up at the Big Ten. Fuck the Big Ten. Uh, but yeah. So you got Michigan, Ohio State. Yeah. You could either. Well, yeah. you could not. So go I was off, right. You could not. Yeah. So I was right. Dukes you were. Right. You were very Hashtag right. Dukes Dukes was right. Yeah. Justice for Dukes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Michigan. My one. Yeah, seven and seven. They started the year seven and zero. One game decided that that would be. I mean, could you imagine telling a Michigan alumni like, "Hey, you guys started seven and zero, and you could finish the year below five hundred." I mean, listen, in, in a year where Jim Harbaugh finally got that win against Ohio State, maybe. Yeah, I mean, hey, Michigan Michigan basketball sucked in the regular season, and then they turned it on in the tournament, so you never know. You never know. You, you, you never know, um, but, but probably not, not a chance because Michigan, you guys just sandbagged the shit out of that first half. But, uh, but good job to the schedules for that one. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's, that's about as nice, nice as we have to be to these teams around the, around the country. Um, I have a bonus that's talking for a certain lacrosse Twitter troll. Um, okay. Get- so I got, we got, I think it was us, the friend, the people at, uh, the post game got tagged by this guy, uh, Ross Thompson, who acts like he fucking played at Duke and was a part of like the fucking national championship teams that tweeted at me about. 28 times tonight when I'm riding my bike to the office and I can't respond and call me a fucking pussy for not responding. He really, really wants us to talk about this. So this is the, that's talking statement. Unranked Connecticut College, who's five and seven against number 16, Wesleyan. One goal game. That's talking. Wesleyan won that game. Here's my thing. If I, if something... Hey, wait, 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 wait. This guy wanted us to talk about... 
an un, an unranked team losing? Yeah. Connecticut College Wesley was the NESCAC game of the year so far. Convince me otherwise. If you even watched it, Lax Gurus. Hey, you fucking piece of shit! No one called us Lax Gurus ever. Ever, ever, ever. And this fucking drives me insane. I'm like red right now. Because people like want to go at me like, oh, club lacrosse, blah, 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 blah. Like, I'm not going to talk about a Division three game between not even two top ten teams. We talked about Christopher Newport beating Salisbury two weeks ago. This is just a loser who is probably a fucking backup midfielder at Connecticut College, and he's probably like, oh, could you please talk about my alumni school? We played in a really close game this year. Eight fucking people care. Eight fucking people care about this game. You know, there's probably four people that actually fucking watch the broadcast. I like lacrosse. More than the next guy. I do this shit two times a week. I try to fucking broadcast this for me and you, week in, week out, churn out this content just to help grow the game. And this fucking piece of shit wants to come at us being like, we don't cover this sport enough. Yeah, I'm going to talk about fucking ACC and I'm going to suck Notre Dame's dick week in, week out because that's what people fucking care about. If this fucking loser wants to go talk about Connecticut College for three people on his fucking Connecticut TV station, go ahead, you fucking loser. Oh boy, dudes, let it out, buddy. So let annoying. Um, no, that that is something that I I I'll touch on it briefly because I feel like I can get into a whole dissertation about this one. Um, people out there who want us to talk about Division Three lacrosse, listen. First off, I think like this is like like I I get the pool that I played Division Three card right. Like this yeah. is kind of like like. When, when, when you're talking about like racial shit and it's like, yeah, I got to Like you can say, Oh my, <laughs> Hey, what, what, one of my best, yeah. one of my best friends played division yeah. three. Okay. Like you, yeah. you can say that, but, but so as someone who played division three lacrosse, I know that nobody besides the, like the parents really don't give a shit either, but like the guys who are playing, maybe their parents, at least like maybe like half the parents, like nobody else really get like, unless you play division three lacrosse, which like granted they're like a million D three schools. So like, yeah, like there might be like a small community of D three hardos who like fucking live for it, but like, we're not going to get like, po- like podcast. Like we just do this shit. Like right now it's, 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 it's fun for us. Like none of us, we're not making a lot of money on it. Yeah. We're not making any money at all. Actually. It's actually costing us money for the zoom. Um, so we're actually down like $40. So again, if anyone out there wants to sponsor us, hit yeah. us up. Uh, but like we, we do this because we love the game. And so, but like we only have so much time and effort to put into it. We're not going to go around and wasting that time and effort talking about D3 games where the general public does not give a fuck. If you want to talk about D3 lacrosse, that's fine. Go start your own podcast. Your own podcast. For, for, for the most part, the only time you really talk about division three lacrosse is division three lacrosse play like alumni in their group chats. That's about the extent of it. So like, don't come at us for not talking about it when like, there's just the general public doesn't care about D3 lacrosse. There's a reason why, like, I, I don't want to equate ourselves to this. Like, I, I know that it's that that's not what I'm doing right now. I'm not equating ourselves, but like first take doesn't talk about D3 football. Yeah, no. And it's also no one, no one gives no a one shit. Does, no one gives a shit. Um, and you know what they do but, do? When they but, do talk about but, Division three sports, it's when something fucking notable happens, which is what we do. When something notable yeah. happens in Division three, we bring it up. When something notable happens in women's across, we bring it up. So, like, you can't say that we don't cover the entire aspect of the game. We're just not going to fucking cover a 5-7 and seven fucking Connecticut college team, you piece of shit. When, a, when an unranked team has a good game but still loses by one, that's not notable. Um, but I will say, again, as as – a podcast who has a former division three bench warmer on, on, on the mic. We can say that the post game guy, they're both D one guys. So they're, they're elitist. They, they look down upon D three. So send all your hatred to, towards them. We're cool. Um, hey, Nick and Evan, how's it, how's it going guys? Uh, but yeah, so good. Uh, good, good. That's talking. That's talking uh, Connecticut college and Wesleyan, that's- the, 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 the game of the millennium. Girl, the game. Um, any other? Uh, oh, let, let's do buy sell as as we're heading into oh, this yes. final final I knew final. We're missing fi- something. Yeah, final weekend of the regular season, so it is time to buy buy buy, and it is time to sell sell sell. It's you got you gotta you gotta get those portfolios mm-hmm. dialed in around this time of the year. Um, you know, I'll, I'll I'll start us off real quick. Yeah. Now I, 
first another another conference where i didn't even realize this until like i don't know like an hour and a half ago that gets six teams into their tournament is the patriot league and so with six teams being in the tournament that means that navy is still very much alive right now and i want to buy every single stock available in navy lacrosse not just because of their big win in overtime against army last week but earlier on earlier i guess this week because again recording on wednesday listening on friday so on wednesday night navy men's lacrosse that at navy and blacks on twitter they put out a video coach joe amplo on the bench he's putting up 335 in front of the entire team getting the boys fired up if you don't think right now that navy could be the most dangerous team in the country dude you've got a coach out here okay maybe he's not repping 335 but he's still going 335 down to his chest and popping it up for the whole squad those guys are going to be fired up heading into the rest of the season. Um, I would also love to see another coach in Division One lacrosse even attempt that. If if, if Dartmouth kept Andy Towers, yeah, maybe. <laughs> um, I like that. Um, I my purchase this week, my buy. I'm gonna buy it right now. I'm buying lacrosse fans. I'm buying lacrosse fans. I think that this is a great time of year for. If you, if you like the sport of lacrosse, you know, throw it on the TV, throw it on ESPN, you throw it on ESPN. It gets heads turning. Um, you, someone can say, what's this? What's going on? Oh, that's not a real sport. They watch it. They can get into it. I just think this is a great time to be a lacrosse fan now until Memorial Day weekend. And then, hey, that's when the PLL starts c- c- coming on. Um, it really is a uh, – it's a special time. I really – I like the conference tournaments. I like, I like this time of year for lacrosse fans. And this is also when – I, I didn't want to steal the whole Arlotta Stadium thing from you, but this is also when the bleachers start getting a little bit filled up. You know, the students start coming down. End of the school year, they want to support their friends a little, get a little drinks in them, come down to support. Um, I, there's nothing more than I like than, like, the I, like, I always think of, like, the Ivy League tournament. And when you just got all those Ivy kids, I feel like they finish up pretty early, and they, uh, they all drive down and be, like, Franklin Field or, like, Yale Stadium. Um, it's, a good, it's a good sight to see. I mean, final finals wrapping up. Boys and girls getting a little loose, getting little after loose. it. Just just cheering on their squad. Yeah, I do love it. Uh, I mean, great great time of the year. Uh, I I feel like I've said this for like the past few weeks, but like just just love like just the, just the random acts of lacrosse you'll see out in your day to day life. I don't know if it's may, hopefully it's as much in New York, but like just like driving down the street passing by an open field that has a couple lax nets out. You see a kid out there just getting some reps in, just just taking some shots. You're like, yep, this is full-blown lax season. I got to say that one of the be- – one of, I was uh, – not to brag, not to brag. Uh, I, was, I was on a little run, and I saw these kids that clearly just were starting to pick up lacrosse, just like, you know, like kind of had like brand new – not like brand new equipment, but it was like hand-me-downs. And the kid was hitting the wall when I was on my run, and I came back, and like 30 minutes later, still was there, still practicing. So just like one of those things that like you love to see. It's not like I'm in the suburbs of New York. I'm right in the concrete jungle, um, it, it, and I saw like five lax sticks today. So it was just cool. I like to see that shit. Love that. Uh, who are you selling? I'm gonna sell the RPI. I think the RPI is a bunch of fucking bullshit. Um, I don't really know. I'm a big, like, analytics guy to begin with, but I just don't get the RPI this year, where they're coming up with their, like, numbers or, like, their system. I And I hate how there's nothing, like, um, college basketball has Ken Palm, where they, they, they could show you, like, the adjusted offense, the adjusted defense, where it kind of lines up. And you're like, oh, that kind of makes sense. The RPI has nothing. It's just like these are our rankings. So here, like here's here's the numbers. Deal with yeah, it, you fuckers. Like, yeah, like I don't get like how do you have BU over Notre Dame? I I don't get that. I don't get how you have West Point behind Hopkins. I don't get how you have Jacksonville behind Hopkins, even though Hopkins beat Jacksonville. Um, I just it just doesn't make sense to me. Like St. Joe's, I think is really low for like the their three losses being by one goal. Um, it just doesn't. It just overall doesn't really make sense to me. And I, I'm selling it this year. I think that it should be thrown out the window this year. And as you guys might hear, 
later on, or I don't know where, where we're going to put the Chris Jast interview, but he, you don't know how, how, how they might use the RPI this year. It might be more off the eye test, so I don't know. I'm, I'm also very much down with throwing all computers out of the window. Um, the one thing I do want to say though, about selling the RPI, like the one thing that I'm really proud about the lacrosse community, like proud of the lacrosse community about, um, I feel like there's not like, there's not really a strong contingency of lax fans who like take the RPI as like gospel. Like, you know how you'll have like baseball fans and they'll have the analytics, like they'll have all these numbers yeah. and they're like, and they're like, this is all that matters. The numbers say this, that's what matters. Fuck everybody else. Like you're dumb. If you don't believe in these numbers, same thing for hockey. Like there, there's a, a, there's a certain group of hockey fans who they don't give a shit about what actually happens in the game. As soon as those numbers get crunched, they're like, yep, that's, mm -hmm. that's all that matters. Everything else, like the eye test can go to hell. Like, there's not really that like group of lacrosse fans. I feel like like there are some people who might look at the RPI and are like interested in it, but there's no one that's like, well, the RPI says this, so you must be wrong. Yeah. At least, at least I haven't come across them. The, no, that's, that's, that's facts. Like I could look. So like the one, the one team that I'll look at and be like, okay, yeah, they, they're probably better than the record shows is like Penn. But even I'm kind of like, like Penn's gonna get in, but in, in some sense, I'm like, did they kind of have their shot to solidify their resume? And did they do enough and to solidify? Which is that's my like, they have a lot of one goal, two goal losses, wins. Um, so yeah, they're they're a good team, but it's just like you had your shot and you guys. So that's why I'm like five is a little like too high in my opinion. Um, but yeah, like either way, I'm down with. I'm down with selling the RPI, especially since you already beat the shit out of the algorithm uh, last PLL season. Oh my god, that what a joke! We got it. Can we get him? Um, I, I hope he's listening to this because we, he, he's got to come up with there, a stat for me. Yeah, there's it's not a single piece of there's not a single piece of lacrosse content that Joe Keegs isn't consuming, so he's listening right now. We we uh, Joe, w w what's the stat gonna be, brother? I mean, I y y people don't forget. I, I, there's got to be a stat named after me, the Dukes. Um, it's coming. Maybe we'll get him on before the PLL season. We'll talk some analytics. Yeah. Um, I, I love talking lax with Joe. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to sell tiebreaker scenarios. Uh, this is, this is a brutal weekend, uh, for people to try to figure out those tiebreaker scenarios. It's just gonna, it's gonna really fuck with your head. Uh, as you're going to hear later on, we're, we're going to get to that interview with Chris Jass in just a minute here. Uh, but you're going to hear where it's the, the tiebreaker scenarios is where you really get yourself into trouble trying to figure out what's going to happen here. So in lieu of tiebreakers, I feel like if you have teams who are tied to get into their conference tournament, I think you should go to a neutral site. Everybody should send their best guy and you should just do a, a free for all Royal rumble Braveheart. Um, so, you know, the, the last person to score is out. So if, if there are two teams for a tiebreaker winner, winner gets into the tournament with the Braveheart, um, you know, if, if there are, you know, four teams fighting for two spots, just, first two to score get in um so I'm, I'm done with trying to figure out tiebreakers and who beat who but who beat the other teams for a um a, a mutual schedule it, it's just way too much for anyone to comprehend tiebreaker scenarios get lost yeah that's a that's a great one that's a great one if, if i could sell if i could sell one more bonus team i'd probably just sell um unranked division three lacrosse teams yeah, get out. Well, besides, besides their sign is college. I don't think yes, they're ranked no, right that, now. But buy, it, buy, buy, buy. Hey, if they're low, if they're low, buy them now. Yeah, or sign is college versus Gettysburg Saturday, April thirtieth. Uh, I'll be there probably after, like in the second half because I've got a high school game to coach. So that's the game. No, this will be my first one that I make it to this year. It's tough, like coaching a high school team. Don't really have like many a ton of free time to get out there but when i go there it's a good time get get all the alumni involved there's a bar right down the street hit a hit a couple orange crushes before the game and then just start start really going after the backup goalies yeah there we go and hey make sure you work the box this weekend all right especially after the, the high school shot clock i know it's, it's gonna be in your head this week oh my god also just it, 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 like I was gonna say the how they, the the guy was complaining that we don't talk about lacrosse. We had like a forty minute segment just talking about high school <laughs> shot clocks. Uh, 
All right. Well, now we're going to get into a you know, 40 minute segment. Now it's, it's, it's a little bit quicker than 40 minutes. It's, it's a pretty quick one, but we've got our interview coming up here with Chris Yastrzemski. Uh, you guys might know him from college cross back in the day. Uh, you might know him from lax Twitter. You might know him as a stat guy on for NHL on TNT, uh, but he's coming up here to break down a bunch of scenarios uh, that could possibly happen in the Ivy league tournament. Um, there are a couple that we're, that we're still unsure of on, on who's right and who's not, but I guess you'll just have to listen to that when you get to it. So without further ado, here comes Chris Yastrzemski. All right. And joining us now, we've got resident stat guru. He, you, you guys can see a lot of his research on, uh, if you're a fan of the NHL and you turn on NHL on TNT. You see our good friend, Paul Bissonnette breaking out all these fancy numbers. That's all courtesy of our guy coming on right now. We've got Chris Yastrzemski. Did I get that one right? I think I got that one. Yeah, you did. I've, I've, I've known you for long enough now that I, uh, you know, that, that I understand how to say your last name, but, uh, for most people who know you on Twitter, they probably just know you as like Chris Jast, or yeah. they probably try to under like say your name a little bit, but probably can't get it. Uh, it's a, a lot of, a lot of crazy letters that don't belong next to each other, but uh, definitely, a, definitely a guy who I'd say you're one of the, I, I put you as one of the the captains of lax Twitter. You've been one of the founding members of lax Twitter. Um, you were very much online, uh, did a lot of stuff with uh, college cross. Now you're uh, you know, now you're here to help us break down everything that's going on with these conference tournaments uh, that, that we are now just a week away from. We've got the final week of the regular season and a lot of these tournaments, uh, most of them, we, we kind of have a, a good idea about who's going to be in and who's going to be out. Uh, but I think the the conference that everybody is just, everybody's brain has just turned into a giant bowl of applesauce, the Ivy league. No one knows how it's going to be broken down and, You've luckily gone through all the trouble for everybody to think for us all. And, and you broke down a lot of scenarios on, on how this could shake out in the final week of the regular season. So Chris, thanks for joining us. And uh, you know, first of all, how's, how's it going? Uh, it's going well. Uh, thank God I have a week off from uh, hockey uh, because my brain is honestly uh, worse than applesauce. It might be like mush entirely, just breaking down all these conferences and seating scenarios and, contacting conferences it's uh it's a lot of work it's a lot of hard work but uh you know we're living we're breathing we're enjoying life it's it's pretty nice down in atlanta i don't know how it is up in uh, philly and or new york it's probably shit but uh you can't complain yeah so dukes real quick like let let's talk about i actually before we get chris to break down some of these scenarios of what we can look forward to in the ivy league i would like what right now, how do you, how do you picture this one going down this, this weekend, right? Like how, how do you see this all playing out? I want to see if the way that you have it is like a scenario that's actually possible to happen. The wins losses or like who gets into like the Ivies who, who get, who gets into the Ivies, but you like, so we've, we've got a couple. So what do we got? We, we have the uh, Princeton Cornell game and then we've got Yale Harvard, I think are the two, the and, two uh, big ones. Important. No, don't what's make- up? Actually, sorry, no. Brown is actually in. Brown is the only team in. So Brown's a lock in already. Lock, yeah, Brown is a lock. All Everyone right. else is not. Well, if I go by the wins losses, can you tell me who's going to get in? Yeah. All right, I'll go. I have to look at it. All right, so Brown beats Dartmouth. Penn is doesn't matter. I think Princeton beats I Cornell. Yale beats Harvard. Is that it? Uh, yeah. So you got what? Princeton over Cornell, Yale over Harvard, Brown over Dartmouth. Yeah. Correct? Yeah. So we got Princeton will be the one seed, followed by Brown as the two, then Yale as the three, and then Penn as the four. Cornell and Harvard are out. All right. Switching it up now. Yale's going to throw that game. If Yale throws that game – is Penn out and Yale still in? Uh, Yale is out and Penn is in. Fuck! It's Harvard one, the Fighting Jerry Burns are one, then Princeton two, Brown three, Penn four, Cornell and Yale are out. Wait, so, all right, so first of all, all right, so let, let's back up because 
already. <laughs> we're about like, what are, we're maybe like How four. How are your brain? Four, we're four minutes into this interview and already um, I'm rattling around a little bit. All right. So real quick, let's just lay everything out here on the table as we stand right now. So we're recording this on Wednesday, but when you're listening to this on Friday, it's still going to be the same thing because it doesn't get going until this weekend. We've got Cornell, Princeton, Yale, Harvard, and Brown. Five-way tie at the top of the Ivy. They're all three and two. You also have Penn there, who's three and three. They're already done their Ivy League play. And Dartmouth, we don't have to talk about Dartmouth. We'll probably, I, I know that – I don't want to say that we'll never talk about Dartmouth again because uh, – We talked about Dartmouth more on this pod this year than I ever would have imagined. Yeah, and 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 as I've, as I've mentioned on this podcast – numerous times big pat resh guy chris i know that you're a big pat resh guy so um you know got, gotta gotta show some love to dartmouth there but we don't have to show any love to dartmouth in in terms of of what's going on here so it, there's six teams this. right now oh go yeah, ahead I will, say, I, will, I will say this dartmouth has looked good in the past two years that they've played i'll give them credit for that they, they've kind of fought a little bit more than they have previously but you know they're still not there yet but they're on this all right, so that is Chris's um, Say Something Nice. So thank you for joining in on that segment. Um, but right now, so we've got a six-way. We've got six teams fighting for four spots, and right now they all have three wins in conference. By the end of this weekend, a couple of these teams, maybe even a few, are going to have four wins, right? So we've got Cornell and Princeton playing against each other, Yale and Harvard playing against each other, and then we've got Brown Dartmouth. So – Two or three teams could end up with four wins, which means that three or four teams could end up with just the three wins. Okay. All right. Hold up. I'm already losing myself here. Um, <laughs> what I want to know, first off, is how is Brown – not that I'm, I am I disagree with it and not that I don't love it because I know that it's, it's huge for our boy Larkin Kemp, but how is Brown like a lock-in regardless – Apparently, uh, Dort, Dartmouth, Cornell, and Yale win. I'm doing all this math right now, but apparently Ivy League saying that they're in, which is so weird. But what Cornell, if what Dartmouth, if Brown loses Yale. to Dartmouth? Not that they. I don't even want to speak that into existence. I already did three weeks ago. Yeah, Fuck I don't you, think. Dudes. Look, I don't think that. It's... <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this is so weird because I'm trying to look. I, I thought I had the tiebreakers right. But apparently Ivy League is just messing with my brain. So I've got if so let's say Cornell, Dartmouth, and Yale all win. Brown is five, and they would be one and two against Harvard, Penn, and Princeton. Um and then I would guess that since we have, we have I'm trying to fake this. So Corn, Cornell, Dartmouth, and Yale win, right? Just picture that. Cornell and Yale are one and two. All right. Harvard, Princeton. Brown and Penn would be three and three against each other, or three and three in the standings. Then you go down to a little mini conference with Harvard, Penn, uh, Princeton, Brown, and Penn. All right, so you have a little mini conference between those four. Harvard and Princeton are two and one against Brown, Penn, and Princeton. So, and then Brown and Penn are one and two against. Uh, yada yada uh whatever harvard we get the uh three seed by beating princeton with that head-to-head -head. princeton gets the four yes and then brown would be five and Penn would be six so i guess the ivy league graphic is wrong in itself because there's still a way for brown to be eliminated uh i could be right on that i could be wrong the ivy league just put out something I'm going to say I'm right because I do all the research and digging and I'm going to say the nerds at the Ivy league are wrong yet again. I love that. Um, yeah. So I don't think Brown is a lock just going from that unless they reset, which I don't think they do, but look, this is just a extremely confusing situation that the, the nerds at the Ivy league put themselves in. If they played in 21, you know, we probably don't have this situation now. Okay. So, all right, so let's back up a little bit because for a second there, I was worried that the guy that we brought onto the show to be the quote unquote expert as how the Ivy League shakes down also had no idea what was going on. You redeemed yourself there a little bit. 
turns out that the Ivy League, whoever is putting out those those graphics on social, um, just fire whoever that was. Not, um, I bet it was Drake. Yeah. Well, I'm looking. I'm looking at that at the tiebreakers and that specific scenario that I laid out. So the higher seed will go. It's, this is a third tiebreaker in section A. In the case of multiple ties, it cannot be broken on the basis on review on, on review of cumulative record against all other teams at that spot which we have two in, right? Uh, we would go to a head, head-to-head between those teams. Uh, so meaning that, you know, play as it stands. No, we wouldn't have a playing game. That'd be uh, sick, though. Fuck. That'd be sick. That would be sick as hell. But uh, Harvard and Princeton, again, are 2-1 and one against that mini-conference uh, involving Harvard, Princeton, Brown, Penn. Harvard has to head-to-head over Princeton. They would be three. Princeton would be four. Brown and Penn would be one and two in that mini conference and they would be out. So the Ivy league is wrong. I'm right. Credit to me. How are we? How are we doing right now? I just want to know what's going to happen. Like what's. I'd love to know what happened too. That way uh, we could help people with some money, but I think Brown wins. I can't see now credit Dartmouth is, you know, playing well. I can't see. I can't see them winning. Sorry, Dartmouth. I see Brown winning. So that makes our lives a lot easier. Brown is definitely in. And there's like, and that kind of adds the, uh, the scenario. It cuts the scenarios in half, I should say. And Brown is definitely in. And this is a lot more easier than if Dartmouth just knocks the living shit out of Brown. Um, and then it's either Princeton or Harvard and the winner of those two games or Princeton. Princeton, Cornell, Harvard, Yale. Winners of those two games are in, and then just depends on tiebreakers. Okay, so, all right. Do you want me to break it down? Do you want me to break it down? Just go through all the possible scenarios with Brown winning. Would that be well, easier for everybody? I, I'm. How many are there? Because I feel like I'm going to get four. Well, There's four with Brown winning. Okay. And obviously, yeah. So, if Cornell, Brown, and Yale win, it's I'm not going to go through the tiebreakers because screw that. Brown won, Cornell two, Yale three, Harvard four. They would have the tiebreaker advantage over Princeton and Penn. Scenario two: Princeton, Brown, and Yale win. Princeton's one. Brown is two. Yale is three. Penn is four. I just want to say right now, hand. I feel like that's that's the most like that's the one that I want to put my. Which one are you? Which one are you saying? I I I want Princeton, Yale, Brown to win this week. I that's if I could parlay that, I would, and I responsibly. Responsibly, I like that, Dukes. Responsibly. Responsibly. Scenario three: Cornell, Brown, and Harvard win. That would put Cornell at the one seed. Two, but I don't know. Cornell is one, Harvard two, Brown three, Yale four. Wait, is the Ivy graphic just wrong? The, the Ivy graphic's wrong compared okay. to like what I've been doing. My time? Got called time out of the play? Yeah. I just caught up and I saw the Ivy graphic. So I was like, oh, this makes uh, like, like I saw it like midway through. I was like, this makes it 10 times easier. So now knowing that, now knowing that they're wrong, it's fucking up my brain. It's completely fucking up my brain too. I'm trying to figure out because I'm looking at these scenarios and I'm like, this doesn't match what my math is doing. Because then you would go. It's it, no. I'm not going to go through the tiebreakers. This is what I had for Cornell, Brown, Harvard winning. Cornell one, Harvard two, Brown three, Yale four, and then the fourth scenario: if Brown wins, Princeton, Brown, and Harvard win. Is Harvard one? <laughs> Princeton two, Brown three, Penn four. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah. Yes. That's promising. Okay. That's honestly promising. So, all right. So, I'm just trying to figure. Like, all right. So, who really? What I want to figure out. One, we we need Brown in the Ivy League tournament so that we get more of the people's goalie. And then also as a Philly guy, I need Penn in the tournament. And I know that right now they're like, they're, so they can't control 
anything that happens this weekend. But it looks like it looks like in order for them to get in, Princeton needs to beat Cornell. Are you talking about Penn? Yes. 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 Penn. Princeton needs to win, and and uh, Penn is in. Cornell is out. Okay. Okay. That's a part that that right there. That's a part that like I feel confident in now knowing that if that if Princeton wins. That means that Penn is in. Correct. Okay. That's a that's a good all right. I finally like that's a good I, sign. I, I, I understand that sign. I understand a piece of this puzzle. I feel more confident heading into the weekend now. Perfect. Okay, so let let's let's see. Can can we piece together a few more of those puzzles? So let's say no, probably not. I was gonna try to, but I was just gonna confuse myself again. Okay, so Brown wins, they're in. Correct. They anyone are, that wins is in. Anyone who wins is in. In that in those in Cornell, Penn, and Harvard Yale. Cornell, Penn, Harvard, Yale. Okay. That would get them the four that would get them the four wins. If you have the magic number is four wins. If you have four wins, you're in. Okay, so you win and you're in, and then the only way to get Penn in is if Princeton wins, but it, like if 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 Cor- if Yale wins and Cornell wins, then that doesn't do shit for Penn. Okay, so it's basically the all right. So we have three Ivy League games this week. I think I I think I have it. I think we did it. We have three Ivy League games this weekend. As long as Brown beats Dartmouth, you win. Like obviously Dartmouth can't win and they're in. But if Brown beats Dartmouth, you win and you're in. Then you've got Cornell, Princeton winning your in. You've got Yale, Harvard winning your in. And then Penn is in if Princeton wins. Yes. All right. I, th- I think that that's almost simplified enough it. to get it. Dukes? Yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm, I'm looking at that graphic. <laughs> that graphic is – that Ivy League graphic is wrong. That Ivy League graphic is wrong. Fuck. Well, that's what I'm going off of right now. Me, and I even just yeah. tweeted at them that they're wrong. Let me, let but me. I think mo- – most of it is right. So, but regardless, like, winning you're in. Yeah, you you can't yeah, win this win weekend. In. Besides Dartmouth, besides Dartmouth, you can't win this weekend and not be in the tournament. Brown has a chance to get in if, even if they lose. And Brown has a chance to get in if they lose. Yes, but there's a okay. small chance that they're out because they lose. But there's but like, okay, but but no one can get in with a loss this weekend. No, yeah, uh, Brown you know, could. Yale, if Yale you loses to Harvard, they can get in. I'm just looking at this third scenario I have up. Yale, if they lose, they can Fuck. still get in. We were so close to getting because, it. So, all right, so look at this scenario three, right? The Cornell, Brown, Harvard. And I guess someone's going to post this, the article that I have up on this whole situation. Um, Yale, Princeton, and Penn would be three and three. Yale is two and oh against Princeton and Penn. Princeton's one and one against Yale and Penn. Penn is 0-2 against Princeton and Yale. By that little mini-conference, Yale is 4, Princeton and Penn are out. Okay. It's a lot of mini-conferences, so get to know the word mini-conference. And and that just all comes down to tiebreakers and shit. And it's a lot of tiebreakers. Okay. And I guess the Ivy League, what their graphic is, did not go by that, uh, that tiebreaker. Or the tiebreakers they have on their specific website. They don't even list the tiebreakers in their post, which is so weird. It's on their website, and I followed that specific tiebreaker scenario, and they're wrong, and I'm right. Yeah, but that's why you're the research guy. They probably exactly. just they just sent some some nerd over. Everybody there else would be sitting on their ass, hands on their ass, and just you know, oh, I don't know. I'm gonna wait for you know someone else to do the work, and that's why I'm here. Okay. Well, I th- I think that the easiest thing to remember is if a team wins besides Dartmouth, they're in. Yeah. And if Princeton wins, then Penn is in. Just double checking. Maybe. No, you're right. Penn is in. Penn would be the four seed no matter what if Princeton wins. Okay. And then everything else that happens, fuck it. Fuck it. Yeah. That's good. Okay. 
But if you guys want to know even more in depth, if, if you guys want to get the right information as opposed to the Ivy League, who they lie and they lie and they lie some more, they lie all the time. Just ask our friend Larkin about it. Um, mm-hmm. But if you guys want to know what's really going to happen this weekend, make sure that you go to collegelacrosse.net, which is where you can find Chris's post breaking down all of this. Uh, Chris, you, you also broke down a bunch of other um, bunch of other conference situations. Um I did literally all of them. My brain is a piece of shit right now. So, so you did all of them. Um, it's, it's unfortunate. One, I, I didn't even know this until we just brought you on that. There's no I, our ACC tournament this year. Did not realize that that was not going to be a thing is that a anymore. COVID thing? Uh, they, they, they kept. So last year they didn't have it because I guess COVID, they didn't really give a reason why. Um, but I guess because the fact that usually in the ACC tournament for Four of the five teams, it should be six, but they're cowards to add a six. Um, four teams that make it, yada, yada, we know about yeah. that situation. Um, I guess to give everyone two games, and that would be what the two ACC finalists would get if they went to the ACC finals. Um, so I guess it's just like a little participation trophy for everybody and a little RPI booster to all, which is not working this year. Now, now, do you see a team like – all right, so let's say – I mean – there, there's no way that that Hughes can get into the tournament, uh, but North Carolina is still there. I mean, they're eight and five. Do you see if they beat? Uh, oh shit, I'm, I'm blanking right now. They play Duke this weekend, right? Yeah. yeah. So, so if if UNC if they beat Duke this weekend, but there's no ACC tournament, so it's not like they can really like build up their resume that way. It's still like a regular season win. But if if North Carolina beats Duke, do you see UNC being a team that can get into the NCAA tournament? Or do you think that they're already done after they're going to need help to, to know? Okay. So they're going to need I help. Think, I think they're going to need a lot of help. They got it. They, they got to be probably cheering for Syracuse to beat Notre Dame. And then I guess whoever would be worse for Duke or Notre Dame to lose, probably, probably Notre Dame. Because if Notre Dame loses, that just makes that Duke win better. Uh, but you know, that, that, that last spot. Could be weird. and that might actually help for the Ivy League, depending what the Ivy League situation goes by, because there could be a good chance that maybe, like I did a little bracketology post on Monday, and I had six teams in, and I'm like, I don't think there's going to be six teams in the in the NCAA tournament from the Ivy. I could see five, maybe there's four. I, I it's gonna be tough to see a team from that doesn't make the conference tournament make the NCAA tournament in the Ivy, but we've had that before in the ACC uh, 2015, I believe. So it's anything's possible and the bubble's always ass. So do you, do you see the SOCON being a two team conference? Nope. Nope. Coward. I I, yeah, I'm that's sorry. A pussy answer. <laughs> <laughs> I could look Jacksonville. Jacksonville's got on the SOCON. They're, no, they're but, but, the, but the way, the way that I see it though, is okay. So let's say, let's say that Richmond wins the SoCon, right, and they mm-hmm. get the AQ. Is Jacksonville's resume not enough to get the the at large? Well, I'll give you a little a little scoop here that I've I've talked to a couple people about this, and they're hearing that the RPI might not be taken as seriously as it has been, and I think part of that is because of COVID. I think if you didn't have the COVID twenty twenty. And 21, where you had the Big Ten and all these other, other conferences playing conference only, and really RPI being a useless metric. A lot of them are going by the eye test and the what they call the RAC, uh, the Regional Advisory Committees, uh, which is apparently the reason why Jacksonville was 10 in those first committee rankings. Uh, we might not have Jacksonville in the field at all as you know a, an at-large if they lose to SOCON, which would be different from, from High Point, in 2019, where they weren't in, granted, they had some really bad losses against St. John's and Jacksonville. Um, but we'll, I don't know what we don't know what the uh, the committee is thinking. There could be a chance if Duke does pretty damn good and they win out, maybe you get Jacksonville in. Uh, um, but but OK, but the only way to do that, though, would be if if Jack's if Richmond wins the. Like I, I think that if Richmond wins the SoCon and gets the AQ, Jacksonville could sneak in as yeah. an at-large. But I don't think that if Jacksonville wins and gets the AQ, that Richmond could sneak in as an at-large. 
Yeah. Yeah. That sounds about right. I think but, it's now, the but, only... but now, but now you're saying that Jacksonville's overrated. Those are your words, I'm not mine. I never you said, said it. I you said it. I never said the words Jacksonville did is say it. <laughs> and overrated in a sentence. You Dude, said you're, I don't you're gonna, you, you're you, gonna you, produce no you no can, you you said that, play it that back, they, play it back. you said you said okay maybe that's why they were 10 in those rankings I did not did I say Jacksonville is overrated besides now no you might I never have. said that come out know. of my mouth I never we'll said back. Jacksonville is over, play it back play it back we'll play, play the back. entire thing back <laughs> I, I never said that I never said Jacksonville is overrated except when I've been trying to defend myself for saying that Jack that, that I didn't say Jacksonville is overrated um, do you think that the Big Ten should get p- penalized for having all six teams make their conference tournament, even though Michigan is the most dog shit team ever and Penn State and Hopkins are even worse? I hate the Big Ten. You know, they stole Maryland from us, the ACC. Um, they took Hopkins away, too, from their independence. Um, you know, it's just like saying, you know, England's going to come and steal our independence again. You know, it's bullshit. Um so I don't really like the Big Ten right now. I know I got my guy Scott Van Pelt, the Terps guy. He might listen to this. I hope he does. I might send him the link. Um, but yeah, I don't like the Big Ten playing six, especially when you have four. Like everyone else does four, except the Patriot League with six teams out of their nine. Nice. Uh, make the Patriot League tournament. It's got to be four. Now the A Sun next year, I think they're going to get if Queens does go to Div- from Division two to Division one, they're going to have ten teams in that conference, which we had a little bit in 20 with the NEC. Um, I have no idea how that's going to work. And it's going to be, you know, a, an absolute clusterfuck uh, in that ace Sun conference with 10 teams. Mm. Brennan O'Neill to Queens. Um, are, are there any, any conferences that, that you're, that you're curious about right now? No, I mean, Oh, the, the, Ooh, does what? The, what we got? Oof. Does the Big East? How many teams yeah, do they come out of the Big East? Of. It's gonna be one, unless 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 Georgetown doesn't win the AQ. It's gonna be two. Do you think, and I so, think Denver, do, do Denver could do it. Villanova could do it. Do you think that this is just? We'll, we'll ask this now. Do you think that Kevin Warren, like it's almost like the payback for Bill Tierney? He's like, hey, Bill, thanks for those other years where you lost the championship. We'll, we'll pay it back now. That doesn't. Kevin Warren does not seem like that type of guy. That would be like, fuck hey, like Jacksonville so in. much. Uh, but but I mean, maybe he 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 might have a future in Jacksonville. Maybe making the tournament. I don't know. I think that's illegal in the NCAA. But this sucks. You know, All right. So I don't, I don't I don't see it happening. I I think it, Georgetown runs the table. We'll see how they play against Villanova. Um, because I it, think it's going to be Denver Villanova in the in the uh, semifinals next week for the Big Big East, and then Georgetown will play Marquette. Uh, I think Georgetown uh, wins it all. Yeah, it, it, it there is just usually some tomfoolery that goes down with the Big East tournament. Whether or not it, it's from Bill Tierney trying to sabotage the the rest of the at larges or not, but you know, I it it's a conference that's known for someone sandbagging the championship and then getting two big East teams into the tournament. So it's hearsay at this point, but it's, I mean, the it speaks for itself. Um, four good teams in the big East and, you know, they don't lose by 20 something goals and former teammates disembowel other former teammates. If you know that story, it's St. John's. So what's the story? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A little, 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 you might want uh, to look that up. A little, little, a little yeah. stabbing. Just yeah. a, just a oh, minor. Oh, yeah, 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 yep, yep, yes, sir. Um, yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. So, all right. So we've got basically no other conferences though, at this point, really none of these games besides the Ivy have that major of implications unless like we're talking about conference like mid-major conferences which like no offense but we're not going to spend that much time breaking you you spent so much time breaking it down that i want to send everyone to your to your post to to read all that um i i'm i'm probably not going to sit here and break down uh the conference tournament scenarios between like robert 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 morris bellarmine and detroit um but so the ivy tournament you win and you're in that's that's all you got to know. Yeah. Sometimes you could lose and you're in, but don't worry about that. Just know you win and you're in. 
Sometimes you lose. You're winning your end, and if you're Penn, you're hoping for the All right, simple as that. And uh, yeah, I mean the the Big Ten bunch of cowards for having six teams as well as the Patriot League in their uh, in their tournament. Um, yeah. So again, collegelacrosse.net is where you can find uh, Chris's post on this one. Also, make sure that you're following him. Your your Twitter account now is what Chris underscore Jast, yeah. or just Chris, yeah. Chris uh, old, yeah. Old old one is in Twitter jail forever. Um, jail. Oh, you, you know what? I actually have one last question before you before we let you go. Um, since I know that that you get to spend a lot of time. Uh, near and around Paul Bissonnette and Wayne Gretzky. I know that they had just announced this past week on the Spit and Chicklets podcast, the name of the Las Vegas Desert Dogs in the NLL, so their 15th expansion team. Uh, you had tweeted out something uh, saying that this wasn't a surprise. So did you did you know this in, in advance? Did you get the inside scoop? I might have an inside source. Uh Maybe it's 99 himself. I don't know. Maybe it's someone else inside the organization. I don't know. But um, who knows? But, you know, it could be somebody else. It could have been, you know, someone in Vegas. You know, I know I know a lot of people. So I don't, I don't know who it was. I, I can't say who it was, but uh, that's all we know. So. That's a, that's a good casual flex to go out on. All right. Well, Chris, thank you for breaking thank this down. Thank you thank for you, uh, hopefully hopefully squaring some of this away for, for a lot of you. Um, or some of you, maybe your brains are just even more scrambled after trying to piece all that together. Uh, at the end of the day, watch the games. It'll all shake itself out. Chris, thanks for coming on, buddy, and we'll talk to you later. Appreciate it, guys. All right. Thanks a lot to Chris for coming on. Um, I, I gotta be out. Like my brain is, is still rattled right now. So like, listen, anyone who's listening right now, like feel free, hit the pause button, go like, take a walk outside, clear your brain a little bit. Um, I, I, I get it was a lot to take in, but, uh, I, I think we got it mostly hammered out there. I'm calling Cap. I'm calling. I'm calling Captain Marvel. I'm calling Captain Jack Sparrow. I'm calling Captain America. I don't think there's a chance that all those scenarios are correct. There was way too much go- for my brain. Like, I was. I was. I. I knew going into this. I was like. I told you. I was like. I'm. I was like. Time out. Like. I. This is too much for my brain. Too much brain power. All I know is, either. There was a scenario that was off, or. Like the Ivy's were wrong, the Ivy Twitter account was wrong. He was wrong about one. There's, there's a lot, there's a lot to be said. But I think that what we should, a funny segment would be if we got the whoever runs the Ivy account and him going back and forth over who should get in over the scenarios. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, it it will be interesting to figure out. I I think that we got it mostly. I think you win, you win and you're in. Besides Dartmouth, yeah, and then some, and then sometimes you can lose and still be in. I, I, I can't even talk about it anymore. I, I, I'm, I'm going to get lost. Um, I, I think it was also very mature of us to be like, we can't handle this situation. We're going to need it. Like, we're going to need to call a plumber. It was like almost like we. This yeah. Is, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah th- th- this was like uh, who, who wants to be a millionaire. And we had to we had to phone a friend. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and and Chris was our, our resident expert on this one. So, I mean, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, he's 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 a guy who he puts in a ton of effort, a ton of time into uh covering lacrosse so glad that we could finally get him on uh and also glad that we can finally get into this again w- there's there's one more week there's one more game of college lacrosse after this weekend but for all intents and purposes this is the final weekend of the regular season uh and and we've got a huge slate of games we've got what do we got here one two three four five six seven we've got eight games on friday don't even want to count how many games are on Saturday. And then we've got a, a solid ACC slate of games on Sunday. So we've got a jam packed weekend of college across most of these games with some big time conference tournament implications at the very least, it'll come down to seating for a lot of these teams. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, I mean, let's just, you know, a, a few big ones. I mean, we've got, you know, I, I thought for, for the longest time that, 
that the Patriot League was only going to be four teams in their conference tournament. Turns out it's six. So these games don't have nearly as much juice as I thought that they did. Uh, but Loyola Lehigh and Navy Bucknell uh, getting after it tonight. That's a six o'clock and a seven o'clock start for both of those teams. Um, I mean, I think you guys know where I stand after buying every stock available on Navy. Um, I, I, I think that that Navy, I, I like them coming out on top of that one. Uh, and then, you know, I, I've got to I've got to ride with my Springfield boys over at Lehigh. I, I like I like Lehigh bouncing back after a, a tough brutal loss to BU last weekend and uh coming out on top against Loyola there. I have a let me make sure I use this word right cuz I want to I want to I want to Oh yeah, I have a plethora. I have a plethora. Plethora. Ple- yeah, yep, there you go. <laughs> there, go. there you go. Now, look at me. Come on. Uh, yeah. I have a plethora of picks this week. Um so when you guys wake up this morning, you're going to say thanks to Virginia minus 9 winner. Virginia minus nine winner against Lafayette. Um, you know, this is like a last chance almost for Virginia to really show off to the committee. So I think they're, they're going to put on a beat down against Lafayette. Let them know that the two, that the two P I think that the back to back national champs, yeah. Are, yeah, the back to back national champs are coming back for a third and they're going to, sh- they, they don't want to leave any doubt. I like army. I like army. Um, this weekend, uh, Army, where are they? Who are they playing? I forgot this. Right. So, the, so, so, the, Ar- so they're away at BU. Yep, I got Army plus two and a half at BU. I got Brown. Now, 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 do you like do you like Army coming out on top of that one or just the cover? I like the cover, but I would take the money line. Fuck it. I mean, I just think I think that Shupu is going to have a bounce back game because he had the shittiest game of his career. I think Nick Turns doesn't want to. You know, after the Navy loss, especially like that, that tastes extra sour in your mouth. That makes you work a little bit harder in practice. So I like, I do like Army in that one in the bounce back spot. Uh, kind of chalk the way through. I like Brown minus three and a half against Dartmouth. Um, again, I just think that Brown doesn't want to leave any doubt. Um, they don't want to end the year with a loss to Dartmouth. I mean, I talked good about Bar- Dartmouth, but I do think Brown gets his dumb throats. Been a beast in cage, and Ogvin is a fucking hammer. I like Princeton minus four against Cornell again. I don't think you you do. I was gonna say that 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 was a little yeah. I a like, little. I like Princeton a lot actually. I think that you know that loss to Harvard was tough again tough, but I just don't like the way that Cornell's trending at all at all. Um, I think that the I think that the, the Princeton offense might be a little bit too much for the Cornell defense, and I've been high on the Cornell defense. I've been high on Gavin Adler. Um, I, I really like Princeton in this one. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, Col- Coulter Mackesy's a kid who's like, yeah. like he seems like a like a kid who he gets that confidence, and now like you're fucked if you're Cornell's D. Um, I will say though, in and that's. I don't know. I'm I'm gonna stay a, a big time Connor Busick believer. So I think yeah. like this is I I, th- I think that like this is a time where like he can he can get his kids to be like, hey, listen, like I know things have been going not the way that we wanted them to lately, but let's let's get out here and let's let's finish strong. But at the same time, I'm rooting for Princeton heavily because I want Penn in the tournament. And also, when I, it's you can you guys if you listen, you can see how I can really shit on a team like me. I'm putting Cornell down lightly when I say like that. I don't like the way they're down trending because I like Busick and I like the way the program's heading. Um, this they're having a great year. Uh, I just don't like the way since probably like probably like the Dartmouth game they've been, they've been playing. Um, but then I like <laughs> this is a funny spread. Uh, Notre Dame by five. Notre Dame minus five against Cuse. Uh, again, that's just. You got they they can't lose it. That's a tournament building game. They can't if they ha, if they lose that. I mean that's. I mean if they lose that, uh, yeah, the tournament is a little bit in doubt. Um, Do you think that the odds makers knew what they were doing with that one? I think they were listening to the pod. Might they? Might be. Um, and then I got two more though. I, Do you have any? Hold up. Uh, not off the top of my head right now, but I, I'm actually interested. I would love. If, because I'm not going to do it right now because that's going to be bad radio. I'm interested on how Notre Dame typically plays in the dome. Cause, cause they're a team, like they have like their indoor facility. Right. But like, obviously we always say that Syracuse is a, 
they're a slightly different team in the dome. They still stink. They're still bad this year, but like they're still better in the dome. So I do think that five might be, uh, may, maybe I mean Syracuse. They have to be embarrassed. They have to be ready to just like, like they're just they're, they're gonna shoot every single like Tucker Dordovic is gonna have the ball on a stick maybe like thirty times. I could see him having twenty eight shots this this weekend because like I, you said, it's always you don't want to fight a guy who has nothing to lose. So you're at home, nothing to lose. I like him shooting a lot early and often. I like Liam Entman making a lot of saves too. Could be a career day for him, but I think five five's big. I don't I don't want to fade Dukes because I I, I love you. No, it's, but it's I, okay. I, it's okay. Hey, hey. I mean, if we're looking if we're looking last year, Notre Dame won eighteen eleven in the dome. If we're looking this year, they beat Syracuse twenty two to six in the grass field, and this actually goes into my argument actually better. So okay, so that that's that's what I was looking on how I need, Notre Dame like plays need, in the dome. I need to see the history, but you made up you made you did put a point in my head that I would actually love to bring up. You saying how they practice Notre Dame practices indoors, with, and I always think as a goalie, I mean, I wasn't good. I wasn't like that good to begin with. I was always the type of goalie that could save one on one, and when it was like ten yards down, he had time. I remember like, oh my god, but I sucked indoors because the lighting always fucked me up so bad like i i went if it was ever indoors like oh yeah i'll probably get i'm giving up 10 plus like that's easy like i i knew it it was like a mental midget with it but if your entman's good enough and he already is like used to the lighting and stuff and like you come in with a little extra edge going to the dome because it's like has the history and everything so i'm really not worried about entman and cage but yeah i i guess the point like hungry dogs um nothing to lose sure but at the end of the day uh i think Corrigan just kind of has his number, and maybe Gate will get have Corrigan's number in a couple of years. But for right now, I think that Corrigan and Notre Dame are safe. Um, but yeah, it's a big number. I know what I'm doing. I know. I know that's. I. I, it might be a I also. Too. I also think I would have had to fire you if there was a line that was Notre Dame by five and you didn't take it. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it's like okay, yeah. Is it going to be my biggest bet of the weekend? No, but like I'm gonna take it. Like I like that. Um, last two. Um, I, I, I like Nova plus four and a half against Georgetown. Um, mm. I, I, I think that Nova, I, I just like Nova. Uh, I think the, the number is pretty big. I think that that's like kind of like a Big East rivalry game and two two good Big East programs. I like Nova in that one. And then my last pick of the weekend, Duke minus four against UNC. They don't want they don't want Chris Gray to get that record. That's my take. That, that defense is going to try to stop everything they can from Chris Gray getting that record. I think that it could be his lowest. But again, it's... You, you could look at it the other way where, hey, Chris Gray really wants the record. So that's why you should take UNC. But I'm looking at it more as, okay, they don't want – they don't want they want to hold back. Like Adler's going to not want Chris Gray to score him, obviously. But, like, defense is going to play up a little bit. Um, I like the way Duke's Duke, trending also. Duke as a school has gotten embarrassed by UNC enough this year that they can add that as well. Yes, and if you remember – so Duke, Duke beat UNC in the cross – and then the basketball team lost later that night. So now you could look at it as UNC was, has the revenge game in lacrosse, but really Duke has a revenge game for Coach K. How much does Brendan O'Neill love Coach K? That's, that's a lot on the table this week for him. That is a lot. Almost, I'd say, a legacy game. Um, I do want to say that I, I think that, that Nova, the four and a half against Georgetown, I think that would probably be my lock of the week. Not only because I, I feel confident in Villanova's ability, especially at home, but also, like we've mentioned before, there's always a little bit of tomfoolery, some fuckery afoot in the Big East. And I think that right now for Georgetown to have this game against – like you don't want to give Villanova your best game on April 29th. You want to give them your best game in the Big East championship yep. game, right? So maybe, maybe Georgetown, they might pull – pull some of their punches, right? They, they don't want to, they want to leave some stuff to be unexpected for that big East championship game. So I, I, I like Villanova keeping that one pretty tight against Georgetown yeah, this weekend. I, I really that, like that pick. Uh, yeah. I mean, listen, I, I, I do, I do like Princeton over Cornell, but I, I think that I would, I would, that's going to be like another one of those crazy Ivy league one goal games in my eyes. Um, one that I'm I'm surprised I didn't hear you talk about, or I, I hope I didn't hear you talk about it, or or else I just wasn't listening. Um, Yale and Harvard. So we we've got yeah, Harvard travel. 
Okay, but Harvard traveling to Yale. That's a that's a Yale minus three line right now. Um, again, another one where I could definitely see that just a, a, a wacky and wild Ivy League uh, game that comes down to the final possession. But I do like Yale to come out on that one. I think that it's it's about time that Yale starts turning back into form a little bit as we get closer and closer to May. Um, yeah, and in those in those ACC games, I I like the chalk. Yeah, and also. Again, Harvard's not at home, which is very much a deciding factor for me in that game. Uh, Harvard also had the alumni backing up. I agree. He, here's a parlay that if if you can get it, take it. Um, I'm not sure if, where it'll be offered, but I, I like if you put parlay Brown, Princeton, Notre Dame, Duke. I bet you can get that for plus money somewhere. Um, it's, it's heavy chalk, but dare I say I love it. Love, love, love. Um, if you don't like the Princeton pack, if you're big on, if you're big on uh, Cornell, then like maybe, maybe dabble it up, throw a little juice in there with Army money line instead. But that's my, uh, those are my picks. Uh, and then my, uh, my, my last lock of the week will be uh, Brett Dobson over 15 saves against Canisius. I don't know if that's actually a line anywhere, but uh, although I guess that would. Canisius would have to take all those shots. I'll but take. Still. I'll take the over and having fun. Um, a great time watching lacrosse. Who does Connecticut College play? I don't know. Ask fucking Ross Thompson. That fucking <laughs> piece of shit. I hope he's fucking uh, listening too. I, you know, and uh, also, I, I just want to thank him for putting us in the category of lax guru with like the quotes because I was like, this is sick. That at least implied to me that someone out there thinks I'm a lax guru. Whoever you are, check your check your ego out the door because I'm not a lax guru. Yeah, the only guru I believe in. Remember that old brine stick, the the stick trick guru. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, yeah, it might, you, you might be still like a little too. I, I hope that you're old enough that you got to play with those at least like. No, once. I do. I, I, I know okay. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Those were so sick. I pretty much the only thing that I can do in lacrosse that is like above average is stick tricks and I credit it all to the guru. Uh, but yeah, so a huge slate of college lacrosse games getting us uh, final week of the regular season. We're flipping the calendars to may on Sunday. Uh, that's also when Duke decides to turn it on. So pray for UNC on that one. Uh, and anything else that we got to head out with or I, I, I think that's good. I mean, I think everyone just needs to sit back, relax and enjoy some lax. Yeah, couldn't couldn't agree more. Um, right. Just you know, take it easy this weekend. You know, you have a lot of weekends this summer, a lot of weekends going after Memorial Day, to be day drinking, going out and about. If you're day drinking, throw it on the TV. If you're t- keeping it easy, get a six pack. Enjoy your weekend. Um, go out after it's. It's, it's great. Um, I actually I'm canceling dinner plans for Friday night just so I can stay in for a little bit and watch the games. So credit to me. That is dedication right there. Nobody loves it more than you, Dukes. Uh, make sure that you are following us on Twitter and Instagram. We are at the Crease Dive on both, and make sure that you are subscribing and watching on the YouTube channel. It's the Crease Dive there on YouTube. And in the meantime, we will be keeping it low to high to the day we die. We out. All right. Thanks for watching the new Crease Dive episode. Um, if you guys like our content, if you guys want more, reminder, just press below, subscribe. That's where all our content would be. Thanks, guys.